Friends, present and absent, old and new, it is heartwarming that you are here to honor Professor Sam Carey, whose intellect and effort have made such enormous contributions to Australia, to science, and personally, to many of those present, I'm sure. Pat Quilty, who has been responsible for managing the construction of the expanding Earth globe, has asked me to say a few words regarding its origin. I can do this rather quickly. The expanding Earth globe was conceived in 2005 as a memorial to Professor S. Warren Carey. An enduring solid granite ball was chosen for the core of this globe in order to permanently record Professor Carey's 1956 reconstructed pre-drift pre-expansion globe. The outer plexiglass globe illustrates the continents in their expanded present-day configuration. The 30th diameter of the outer globe was determined simply by the fact that the continental templates from Carey's original 30-inch hue and pine globe still exist. This made it easier to reproduce these templates for our purpose. The 18-inch diameter of the granite core represents the 40% reduction of the Earth's radius required to reconstruct the continents in Carey's, on Carey's pre-expansion globe. Based upon his own orcline concept, Carey's reconstruction, to my mind, remains the most comprehensive geological reconstruction of the globe to date, and in spite of widespread acceptance of the plate tectonics hypothesis, many aspects of Carey's expansion-based reconstruction have been verified and many have yet to be refuted. That said, please bear with me just a few minutes more. I have been asked many times by friends in the USA why I travel to Tasmania to study geology. I am not sure that anyone from Tasmania, save from my wife Anne, has ever asked me that question, but you are about to hear just one of the several possible answers. 1956 was a big year in Prof. Carey's legacy. It was a year of the Continental Drift Symposium in which he formally introduced the expanding Earth model as the engine driving continental drift. Set aside the expanding Earth model for a moment, however, and bear in mind the fact that continental drift itself was still regarded as a wild and improbable hypothesis by the geological establishment of that time, and was described as such in 1958 by a highly regarded Yale University professor. In fact, none of my professors in the Yale School of Geology, save for Prof. Gary, ever even mentioned the term continental drift. 1956 was also a big year for me personally. It was the year I entered Yale University. Some two years later, at the very end of the last class of the 1958 school year, a noted Yale professor looked back toward the class as he was about to walk out the door and said, if you've not yet set your class schedule for next year, sign up for Sam Carey's course in structural geology. He's a visiting professor from Tasmania and is a wild man with absolutely wild theories. In 1959, I had signed up for that noted Yale professor's advanced course in which I was the lone student. In this four and a half month course, I met with this professor exactly one time for a 20-minute session wherein he set my project for the entire year. After that, we had four scheduled appointments, all of which he missed, including the final two appointments in which we were to discuss the results of my project and my grade for half a year's work. Instead of a face-to-face -face meeting, at year's end, I found a note on his office door which read, Sorry to have missed you yet again, and good luck. In 1959, however, I had followed his advice and had signed up for the course in structural geology to be taught by the wild man from Tasmania. Now here's the difference. One afternoon at the end of his lecture, I asked Prof. Carey a question, the nature of which now escapes me some half century later. What I do remember, however, is that it was nearly 3.30 in the afternoon and as the rest of the class left the room, Prof. Carey launched into an answer that began with the basic fundamentals of structural geology and became annotated with blackboard drawings, slides, related references, stories, and reminiscences. Prof's afternoon answer to my question stretched into the early winter evening 
and we proceeded to a local restaurant where he shouted me dinner. We discussed geology, Tasmania, and the world over coffee until the session finally broke up at 10 o'clock when the restaurant closed. Not only my horizons, but my whole earth had been expanded in a single seven-hour afternoon with this great, great teacher. This is one reason why I traveled to Tasmania and one reason why the expanding earth globe now exists. My thanks to Pat Quilty, June Pongrantz, Tony Sprint, and all others who have been instrumental both in construction of the expanding earth globe and enabling this 100th anniversary memorial event for Prof. Carey to come together. And to close, I will again quote that other Yale professor by saying, sorry to have missed you yet again, and good luck. Thank you.